This video is brought to you by Wicket Cricket Manager. England are getting a lot of flack for not picking Harry Brook in their World Cup squad. But while the selectors, and I suppose Ben Stokes being available, are getting the majority of the blame, there is a much bigger issue here at play. Because on cricket reasons alone, you can actually make a case for why Harry Brooks is not in the squad for England. For instance, their plan for this World Cup looks pretty much exactly the same as the last time. Essentially, they're going to attack at the top, they're going to score it, run a ball in the middle, and then explode at the end, while their bowlers will try and take as many wickets as possible. It won them a World Cup. And they really haven't played as much ODI cricket with their full strength team since. So you can only assume that that makes sense for them to try it again. And we can tell that as well just by the original squad they have selected here. And the common thought is that Ben Stokes kept Harry Brook out of the squad. And that is partly true and we'll get to that. But it's far more complicated than that. England use depth charts for their teams. So essentially they have a list of roles that they want to fill in any squad, which is a bit different to how conventional selections have worked in cricket. And so England are not just looking for openers and middle order players. They believe that they have a template for winning white ball cricket. And because of that, they're not looking so much just for batters, but specifically four different kinds of players in their top six. And this is the squad as it currently exists without Brook in it. And so depth chart wise, it's worth looking at what roles these guys have. Jason Roy is there to attack when he opens. Johnny Bairstow is the other opener who also attacks and is the backup wicketkeeper. This is fairly normal, except they probably go a little bit harder than everyone else. Of all the openers with a thousand balls in the first 10 overs since the start of the 2015 World Cup, they are the fastest scorers in cricket. So those roles are fine, and there are no backups in this side for those two, but I would assume that they aren't planning on dropping either of them. A late injury might need a replacement. They do have Milan, Stokes, and Butler who could all do that if required. Of course, when you just talk about that captain, he obviously has a very clear role. That is as a late enforcer. Essentially, the idea here is for this player to come in around the 30 over point and capitalize on the last few overs before the death starts. Now, Harry Brook would actually be an ideal player for this, if not a backup. But the thing is, if you look at England's team, they actually already have a backup for Butler in Liam Livingston for this role. What Livingston gives them is more than just batting. He's a matchup spinner with the ability to turn the ball away from any batter that he needs to. His bowling is pretty limited and probably more suited to T20 cricket, but he can give them some team flexibility in his selection. And I think that's the main reason he's there, but there are also others. Livingston is older, but also more importantly, he's vastly more experienced in one day cricket. Brooke is a fantastic player, but taking him to a World Cup would be a massive leap for him. And it's not even that Livingston has played a lot of limited overs cricket. Compared to most players of his age from England, he actually hasn't played that much. But compared to Brook, it's a ton. But even so, Livingston is obviously not the player who really took Brook out of the squad. It was Stokes making his much rumored comeback that really edged him out. And that's certainly how it was solved. But from an England perspective, Stokes and Brook don't actually fill the same role. From the 2015 World Cup until 2019, England's success came from scoring more runs than other teams. They attacked at the top, but teams had done that since 1996. They went nuts at the end, but that was obviously a fairly normal part of ODI cricket. What England did that was completely different was change the middle of the game. The 10 to 40 over mark, they scored a lot of runs without losing wickets. The guys up the top and the power guys at the end are always going to be sexier. But it's this middle machine that allows for the top to go strong because you still have proper batters who can make big runs afterwards and also allow for the bottom half of the order not to be in too early. And when you start to break down what this middle 30 overs is all about, one thing that England talk about is having a classy number three. Luckily for them, they have Joe Root. Now that's certainly not a role that Brook is going to play. For instance, he didn't like batting number three in test match cricket, and he's here for a good time, not a long time. And the other two positions at number four and number five are really for experienced strike rotators who can hit big later on. In that previous World Cup campaign, Owen Morgan and Ben Stokes did this, and they scored an amazing amount of runs in the middle overs between those two World Cups, and of course, Joe Root was even better. High averages matched with really good strike rates. And with Morgan gone, Milan has replaced that spot and has been fantastic in doing so. I've long thought that this was his best format. And so he's a fantastic replacement for Morgan. And it is only from 500 balls in those middle overs, so certainly not a lot. But he's averaging a million runs at better than 100 strike rate when doing it. Whether it works or not, they should at least believe that he might be able to do this job. Harry Brook has never done that job. And whether it's the Milan position or the Stokes position, it makes sense to actually go back to Ben Stokes because he is, 
Ben Stokes. And that is the point. Stokes is still the kind of player they want at number five. And Harry Brook is just not that kind of cricketer at all. And that's essentially why he's not in the squad. A little bit of grass on the wicket is good, but too much and all hell breaks loose. Not enough and things can go sideways very quick. The same is true of your pubic hair. And you don't have a groundsman who smells like fertilizer telling you what to do. No, you are the curator of your own pubic pitch. So if you're having trouble grooming your pitch, what about Manscaped? They've invented a sleek, well-designed, optimized trimmer that helps you shave your balls. I've used it, and it's incredible. It's good enough to use at Lord's. So get 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code REDINCA. And you just put that in at manscaped.com. That's 20% off, free worldwide shipping, manscaped.com. The code is REDINCA. I always thought this podcast took balls more seriously than anyone else. Then I tried Manscaped. England don't even know if Brook can play that kind of role. Had they played more one days and tried him in that kind of position, they might have found that he was even better than someone like Stokes in that position. But they haven't. So they're going to go with what they know. But we've only looked at this from one angle so far. And England actually only have one backup batter in this squad. Brook is not out because of Stokes. It's because England have only taken eight specialist batters. Or maybe seven, depending on how you look at Moen Ali these days. So the real issue here is why they need so many bowlers. This is partly because Stokes can't bowl at all and Jofra Archer may not play. But look at what they have. Two spinners in Moen and Adol Rashid with Liam Livingston as their backup and I suppose a little bit of Joe Root. But their seam is a whole different vibe. They want all-rounders. So they have Sam Curran, Chris Wokes, and I would assume David Willey as their backup who can bowl and also hit the ball a little bit. That's basically their new ball bowling covered. Their middle overs will be sorted by the spinners and Mark Wood in the role that Liam Plunkett did in the previous tournament. But they also appear to have Gus Atkinson as Wood's backup in case of injury, which of course with Wood is always possible. But Atkinson is probably also here because they're not quite sure about their death bowling. And that's also why Reese Topley is here. Willie, Atkinson and Topley, who I all assume are probably not going to be in the first 11, although Topley is certainly a chance of getting in that side, are all there as backups. That's a lot of bowling backups for one tournament, especially when you have a lot of all-rounders in your team. And that's because England know more or less what they can expect from their top six, but that their bowling is just nowhere near that level and they might need to adjust on the fly. If they had Archer who can bowl at the front or at the back or Stokes bowling, they might actually have another spot available for Brook. Even if they just had a death bowler they trusted or if Wood was able to play in every game without them having to worry about him. But England's flaws with the ball means that Brook probably most likely comes in as an injury replacement at one point, rather than being in the frontline team. However, all of this is about normal cricket selection. You can disagree with some of it, and you can say, well, Brook's just better than some of these other guys. He should be in the squad, and Livingston's bowling doesn't matter, and Stokes hasn't played a lot of white ball cricket recently. All those things are absolutely fine. But the real reason that Brook is not in this squad is because for some reason the ICC still make teams take only 15 players to a World Cup squad. Why is that the case in 2023? Like in 1987, it made sense. Money was tight. The ICC wasn't selling huge global rights packages. And that was a similar amount of people who would go on a test tour. Now sides sometimes travel with A teams with them. And not even the rich ones. West Indies A were in New Zealand during the senior teams tour of 2021. We see expanded squads and net bowlers traveling all the time now. The old 14, 15 person squad really doesn't fit with modern cricket. There are also many T20 leagues who have 16, 17, 18, or in the IPL's case, as many as 25 players allowed in a squad. There is really no reason to keep it at 15 other than the fact that they've been using it for a very long time. In the beginning of the World Cup in 1975, it was actually only 14 players per team, which was probably more similar to the kind of test squads that would be sent out in that time. In fact, the 79, 83, 92 and 96 event all had 14 players in the squad. It wasn't until 1999 that one extra player was added, though some extra leeway was made for the T20 World Cup during COVID times. But what this essentially means is that although the 1975 World Cup was a largely amateur affair, and we have now in a billion dollar event, even with all that extra money, the teams only have one more player available to them. Football, which also has 11 players on the field, but three subs as well, has 23 in their squad. For the whole Qatar thing, they had 26. But let's just go with the number of 23. That means in any one squad, they have nine backups who are not going to play in that game. 
There is simply no reason why cricket should not have more players in their squad. And you hear a lot of guff from people about how the World Cup should be the best teams, and that's why the associates are not around. But you know it is nonsense when they don't point out that most teams only have four backups, meaning tactics, one-off matchups, special wickets, or a game where you need to score at an unusual level. It's pretty hard to actually do anything with your squad because you've got to have, I don't know, a backup keeper and a backup seam bowler at all times, and there's almost no one left to do anything tactical with. I mean, India have left out Ashwin and Chahal. But of course, if you look at it from a cricket perspective, they already have two all-rounders who bowl finger spin, so that makes Ashwin's fit a little bit odder. And Chahal spins the ball the same way as those two guys I just mentioned. However, if you are playing a team with a lot of right-handers in the middle, then having Chahal is actually completely fine. And if you're playing a team with lots of left-handers, you'd still want Ashwin to come in, even if it's only for one game. And this isn't just about the big teams either. Ireland had to leave the pinch blocker Andy McBrien at home for the last World Cup because they wanted extra seam to travel to Australia with. There's no reason why cricket should be forced to make those sorts of decisions because of an arbitrary rule of 15 players in a squad. Team selection is generally a lot harder than people think. Most just want the player they are biased towards in their team. Others want the best players ignoring roles and fit. And of course, someone is always going to miss out. That is the case if it's 18 players, 25 or 32. But the real issue here is that these squad sizes are a relic from cricket's amateur past. Having Brook, Ashwin and Chahal would actually make the quality of the World Cup even higher. And they are not there because the ICC has not expanded their squad sizes in over 20 years. And because of that arbitrary rule, some of the best cricketers in the world will not be at this World Cup. But not because of bad selections or nefarious planning, but simply because someone decided that the extra three flights and hotels would cost too much money. Harry Brook does not quite fit into this England squad as it's currently constructed. You could have a good argument about why he should or shouldn't be in the squad from that perspective. But I don't think you make any argument at all that this World Cup is going to be better because the ICC has decided that only 15 players from each country can actually be in a squad. Thank you.